Welcome to the Advanced Botulinum Toxin Therapy course. With the help of our videos, we will provide you with a coherent insight into the off-label use of aesthetic botulinum toxin therapy. We will discuss injections of the following locations. Lateral nasal bridge, so-called bunny lines, nasal bridge, nasolabial folds, also known as gummy smile, chin, the so-called cobblestone chin, as well as masseter hypertrophy due to bruxism, and, last but not least, the platysma muscle. Lesson 9. Lateral nasal bridge. Bunny lines. Here you can see the formation of wrinkles on the lateral nasal bridge during maximal muscle contraction, popularly known as bunny lines. Let's take a look at which muscles are responsible for this. The following muscles act on the nose. The nasalis, the depressor septi nasi, the levator labii superioris aleque nasi, and the procerus muscle. Nasal bridge. Here you can see the lateral nasal bridge. In some patients, there is a physiological downward curvature that can be perceived as disturbing. In addition, aesthetic botulinum toxin therapy can achieve the slight snub nose that is often desired by female patients. Now let's have a look at the video. Start as usual by disinfecting the skin. Do not use alcoholic disinfectants, as they can irritate the nose. Mark the injection point cranially on the philtrum and make sure that the point is centered and symmetrical to avoid the complication of an asymmetrical expression. Nasolabial, gummy smile. During the injection, support your little finger on the lower jaw so that you have a steady hand position. Use the needle to inject into the muscle at a slight angle. One Mertz or Allogan unit or 2.5 Spaywood units are injected per point. Then gently dab any bleeding with a cotton swab and compress lightly. You can guide the needle precisely by supporting it with your little finger. Let the patient know shortly before the injection so that they are prepared, as it can be somewhat painful. Chin. Although the risk of complications after botulinum toxin treatment of the chin is low, insufficient closure of the mouth can result from accidental paralysis of the orbicularis muscle. This can result in eating, drinking, and speech disorders. As prophylaxis, make sure that the distance between the injection point on the chin and the lower lip is not too small. For this reason, you should start with a small dose and repeat if necessary. Another complication is asymmetrical mouth movements. These occur when the injection is too far lateral and the depressor anguli oris is accidentally paralyzed. Therefore, ensure before injecting that your injection points do not stray too far from the midline. The masseter muscle. The masseter is the strongest of the four masticatory muscles and is partly responsible for the lateral contouring of the face. The lower jaw can appear wide and angular due to a prominent masseter, a frequent reason for aesthetic therapy with botulinum toxin. In addition, Overactivity of the masseter muscle can lead to headaches in some patients due to unintentional grinding of the teeth, also known as bruxism. Therefore, a purely therapeutic indication for treatment with botulinum toxin can also be provided for these patients. The aim of both indications, aesthetic and therapeutic, is to inhibit the activity of the masseter muscle. The masseter muscle attaches to the zygomatic arch and inserts at the angle of the mandible. It is mainly responsible for the closure of the jaw, but also causes lateral and longitudinal movements of the lower jaw. In the dorsal area lies the parotid gland, in which the facial nerve divides. The parotid duct emerges from the gland. When treating the masseter, you can form a line of reference between the tragus and the lateral corner of the mouth. Below this line lies the masseter muscle. The platysma muscle. The strands of the plasma on the neck become more visible with increasing age and can prominently emerge when speaking and using the mimic muscles, 
especially in slim patients. Patients who can intentionally tense the plasma strands to the extent that they are visible are especially suited for treatment. Now follow through with the injection. Grasp the muscle strand with your left hand, pull it slightly forward, and place the needle in the muscle belly between your fingers. This allows you to inject into the muscle and still remain relatively superficial, as there are many large vessels and nerves in the depths that we do not want to injure.